Bull sharks, a coastal being. That means they swim where you do. Researchers think they're moving north into the sounds of North Carolina, and they want to know why and what happens when the shark reaches maturity, eventually taking to the sea. The moon is still setting. It's just before the sun climbs up into the sky at a boat entrance to the Pamlico Sound, some 30 miles from the ocean, that we meet Dr. Chuck Bangley, a researcher working with the North Carolina Aquariums and the Smithsonian. The Pamlico Sound, which is thought to be half fresh and half salt water, lies near the outer banks of North Carolina. The bull shark, at least the juveniles, are in these waters, and researchers know it. You were saying that you think the bull sharks are starting to colonize here. Why is that? So as we've uh, as we've looked at different uh, different data sets in Pamlico Sound, the water temperature has actually been increasing steadily. It wasn't slowly either. Somewhere around 2010 or 2011, the bull shark population exploded here. More and more mama sharks giving birth in the sound before fleeing back to the comfort of the ocean. This is because they have really powerful jaw muscles. The bull shark is a fascinating creature, too. They get their names partially because of their thick bodies and wide heads, and partially for their attack on prey, often headbutting before the kill. Inside their mouth, pound for pound, the bull shark bites harder than the great white. Its teeth similar, too, with skinny teeth on the bottom, these perfect for spearing prey while the top row of teeth are serrated, no match for the flesh of food. The outside of the bull shark, the perfect armor, really, it's not smooth like you think, but rough like sandpaper. And the shark's skin isn't really skin, it's scales, sort of like tiny teeth called dermal denticles. This makes the bull shark a warrior of the sea. Some evidence even suggests the scales let the bull shark move quieter in the ocean. Right there. Yeah. On the boat, Dr. Bangley and his crew are trying to catch the bull shark to tag it. They're hoping the data collected answers the why and how and what's next. You don't realize it when you're looking at them, but they're they're not that flat. Today's bait for luring in that juvenile bull shark, a cone nose ray. Before it was chopped for bait, data and tissue samples were taken. It's hooked and dropped in. Now the team waits. If the bobber signals something is attached, the team moves in. Otherwise, they wait for about an hour. The bull sharks here are young for the most part. This shark is probably two weeks to a month. This one the team caught, but it was dead. Tissue samples were taken and studied. Eventually, it's going to become bait. This right here is the umbilical scar. It's essentially the shark's belly button. Though this infant shark might be afraid of humans scurrying away at the site, in the sound, it's likely already the top predator here. There's no competition from other shark species. So when a shark ends up on the other end of one of these lines, researchers flip it on its back. It sort of acts like a natural anesthesia. From there, researchers insert a tracker. When the shark gets near a receiver placed throughout the sound and beyond, data is collected. So far, a couple of bull sharks have been tagged here, but as temperatures change, the number could increase. When these sharks reach adulthood, typically around 10 years, and swim out of the sound, Dr. Bangley says they'll undergo a big coastal migrations, migrations that aren't well understood at this point, and migrations that vary among shark species. But the bull shark's not the only marine life thought to be migrating north. Sea bass, a once easy catch for fishermen in North Carolina, are now showing up in abundance in places like New Jersey and southern New England. Lobsters are on the move, too. The warmer waters force the creatures to shift from southern New England to north of Cape Cod. Diseases like shell rot are becoming more prevalent for those who stay behind. So where do these bull sharks come from, and why the Pamlico Sound? Dr. Bangley says, though it's not 100% sure, it's thought these sharks are coming in from Florida. Researchers have looked at environmental conditions, the salinity of the water, the oxygen, the time of day, even daylight. The concluding answer as to why they're here Degree change in the water temperature, something as small as a degree or two, the likeliest factor in their arrival. But what happens when these top dog apex predator deems new territory theirs? A lot of what happens when an apex predator comes into a new area are largely unknown. Um, the fact that these animals are here gives us a chance to study that. As for the impact on North Carolina's coast and for beachgoers, it could be 2020 or 2021, 10 years after the first bull sharks started appearing in the sound before we know where they'll go. We don't know for sure yet whether this has caused a corresponding increase in adult bull sharks, which would be the ones that would be more hazardous to people. For now, data and research.